Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be taking you to a running assessment. So I'm going to the running room with R&D Physio. Mr. Adrian Da Costa has invited me down for a running assessment. So it's a fancy treadmill where they will put lots of different sensors on my body and essentially get me to run for a period of time where they will assess my running style and obviously how sort of what improvements I can make to my running um, and look at areas that I can improve my efficiency and my economy and all that sort of data and all that sort of jazz. So if you are keen in learning about a running form and how someone moves on the treadmill and obviously seeing what areas they are likely to improve in, this is a good video for you, so stick along. So to start off, I was walking on the treadmill. Uh, what Adrian did do was put on these four little sensors which trigger on his equipment. So they were attached and the arrows shown. So we started off at a slight walk and then we got up to 15 kilometers an hour, which is just slightly below my threshold pace and also with like a tempo basis. Nothing to sort of tire me out, it's just so I can get up to a really good running speed. Essentially what the equipment is doing it is looking at my form, uh, the sensors on my foot, my knee and my hip and obviously my neck are looking at the sort of positions and the sort of angles in terms of building a line by line sort of plot when you look at it over the camera and what it's actually analysing. So there's cameras looking at me side on and obviously from behind just to sort of analyse my form, my gait, the way I'm striking, my pressure points and also on the treadmill are sensors which sort of pick up my force from the actual treadmill itself. So at the moment I'm just running quite cruisy and to a point where I'm just trying to keep as straight and sort of as natural as possible, be taking the fact that I'm being watched on the screen. I'm not trying to look at myself too much, just focus on a point in front and just try and keep running as straight as possible and to as most natural ability and maintain. We're then talking through um, some of the results and obviously from the first part and then we're gonna walk into um, some technique and some clips in terms of in some technique and some drills to sort of improve that positioning and obviously the way I pull my leg up. So a couple of these drills, I just activate the hamstring and sort of really pull my leg as I the gate, plant the foot and then pull it back up and then that will help with any slight overstride and obviously help me sort of become a more efficient and effective runner. So we are looking at those 1%, those sort of small percentage increases that we can make to make my running form a lot better. So on this one, I'm actually doing the drill and we hop back onto the treadmill again to perform the same um, 15 km an hour pace but with this slight modification to the technique where as I strike the ground I'm quickly pulling my foot back up, pulling my foot back up. So if you look at a lot of professional athletes they get their pull, they have a very high turnover and they are pulling their leg back up fairly, fairly quickly. And if you look, as you look on this sort of set of clip we can see that my leg turnover is really, really good. It's very, very flowy and there are occasions when I sort of drop back and you can see the old sort of my normal technique and then you can see where I'm trying to increase and add this modification back in. So as I'm pulling I'm just thinking quick 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 tap 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 pull 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 with that turnover getting that leg nice and high and sort of making sure that if it is like a match you're just swinging naturally as possible. It does take a lot of time to sort of adapt something like this into your training but it's just those small small changes that you can make to make you cover the ground a lot better in terms of the results and how they look between the two there is a, dis a distinct difference between how my foot and the pressure that's going through the the foot so on the first occasion I was definitely um, not striking through my big toe as much um, it's a little bit sort of static whereas on this occasion I was very very conscious and much more aware of planting my foot and rarely rolling my foot from sort of heel to toe as uniformly as possible to make sure that sort of gait cycle was as straight as possible and ensuring that I'm pulling and I'm, I'm using my gait cycle rather than sort of just being quite lethargic. So a very, very interesting observation and it's definitely something that which I, I thought might occur and it's also good to see the results back up and I'll sort of go through the results side by side what they actually look like in terms of what the technique is. So it's just a small changes that you could try and incorporate and it is something that you'll be able to do more so on your actual more speedier runs, a bit more trickier when you do easy runs.
So even when we look through the results, you can see that the left hand side is the first set of run that I did and the second on the on the right hand side is the modification. So as you can see straight away, the force that's going through my feet. Um, obviously, I put more force through my big toe on my right hand side, obviously probably potentially being the dominant leg. What you want to see is that big toe being nice and red in that pressure point. Um, and I've also adjusted the amount of sort of flow on sort of the, the, the rear side of the shoe which is coming through as you sort of go down you can actually definitely see the distinct difference in the pressure points and the gait cycle and the line that goes between the sort of the midfoot up and towards the foot you want to get that line as centrally as possible and that's something that that modification did change and this is something i need to be aware of that i am running and when i am running just to make sure that i am not rolling off onto my smaller toes and that i'm rolling off and towing off on and from my big foot so it's definitely a change which i've noticed straight away that was on sort of the stance and obviously as you're sort of going through your cycle again moving through uh, everything else was good in terms of the results through the stance phase and the swing phase and then looking at the step time and the cadence time um on the first occasion it was 184 uh steps a minute which is good for it's probably pretty much in a racing sort of scenario i probably would be about 186 and the only difference i did notice was that because you are swinging more and you are sort of putting your foot down and planting and you're having a smaller swing phase i did lose a step per side which isn't it's nothing really in, in the grand scheme of things it's just more technique work when you do um adrian did mention that there was an occasion of that you can actually potentially just lose a tiny bit of step uh, but just in case of learning and rewiring your sort of your neuro system sort of to make sure that you are um, planting your foot and you have that quick turnover at the same time looking at uh the sort of the butterfly analysis in terms of the gait line so the left hand side is the left foot and the right foot and what you can see is the fact that it kind of rolls in from the outside and then we kind of have a crossover point um ideally you want the cross to be in the dead center of that line which isn't too far off and um, the only sort of thing that we did to sort of correct on the right hand side was that it was no sort of touching it was very much forefoot landing and that crossover point is pretty much in the middle either way adrian was happy on, on both but obviously you can see the difference between the two sort of highlighting straight away and again with the gate line you want to get it as centrally and close to possible as your big toe um so a small change there making be making sure i'm conscious and aware of that i'm landing on my foot and planting it sort of as parallel as possible to the ground and um, aside from that everything else looked good um in terms of the force and pressure you kind of kind of got a little bit more force going through in a time it's a little bit more uniform in terms of the sort of the graph between the two again some small small changes which i know this is and this is what it's sort of sort of highlighted more than anything it's just very very small changes to the actual sort of uh biomechanics of how i run um changes with that will take time and obviously with strength with strength work and training in the gym and sort of doing lots of potential different type of drills will actually in aid my running and obviously help me become more efficient and effective runner so yeah, that was the analysis and the report. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.